Planning Board of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, and just so you know the schedule, there are basically two meetings tonight. One is this special meeting, which we'll get into momentarily. Following the special meeting, there will be a workshop, which will be conducted in the Jordan Conference Room, which is where we usually have them. So there are two separate things going on, just so you know. The, um, the special meeting, which we'll deal with first, has three items of business on the agenda. One, uh, approval of minutes from the previous meeting. Uh, number two, an item of old business, and that is the 12 Hillway subdivision reapproval and site plan amendments. Um, Dr. Zev and Amber Myers are request requesting approval of a three lot subdivision located in Hillway. The approval lapsed on August 17th. And minor amendments, such as shifting the angle and shape of the connector to the site plan approval of the Cape Chiropractic and Acupuncture <coughs> Center. Uh, center. Um, section 16.3.2, uh, minor subdivision review, public hearing, and section 19-9, site plan amendments to public hearing. Um, the first item of business, the approval of minutes of the previous meeting, which the board has received. Uh, are there any comments, Carolyn? Oh, no, I was just gonna make a motion. Oh, okay, any <laughs> comments or discussion before we do that? Okay, we'll. We move we accept the meeting minutes from the so September, September 20. 20th. September 24th meeting uh, as written. 20, Tuesday. 20, 20. Yep. Second. Okay, we have a seconded uh, motion. Any discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. <clears throat> we'll now go on to the, the main um, item of business in this special meeting of the planning board. Um, before we get into the particular details, uh, I'd like to note that the, this was initially scheduled for the October 18th regular meeting. Um, for a variety of reasons, um, partly the very minor uh, nature of the changes and also in an effort, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, stay ahead of the winter weather, uh, we did schedule this meeting tonight as a uh, special meeting so that the matter could be handled expeditiously. And so what I would first do is ask for a motion to um, consider this matter at this October special, uh, fourth special meeting. That's found on page eight of your handout. Um, and that would be to remove it from the October 18th uh, meeting and to consider it this evening. Would somebody care to make a motion on that? I'll do it. Caroline? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the Plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of two Penguin Properties LLC for minor subdivision review of a three lot subdivision and site plan review of two buildings containing 6,205 square feet of medical office space, 10 multifamily residential units and 357 square feet foot building connector located at 12 Hill Way be removed from the October 18, 2016 Planning Board meeting and considered at the October 4th, 2016 special meeting of the Planning Board. And do we have a second? Sorry. Thank you. We have a second in motion. Any discussion on that? Being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? It carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now moving on to the, <coughs> excuse me, um, to, to the uh, introduce this matter um, to Penguin Properties LLC, which is owned by Dr. Zev and Amber Marowitz, are requesting reapproval of a 13 lot subdivision located at 12 Hill Way, <clears throat> which the planning board approved on May 17th, 2016. The approval expired when the plan was not signed and recorded with in 90 days as required. And for the um, information of the people attending or listening, this uh, was an inadvertent failure. Uh, had, there was no substantive reason behind it. And so it's, we're basically trying to correct that situation. The applicants are also asking for approval of minor changes to the site plan approval, also granted May 17, 2016, of two buildings containing 6,205 square feet of medical office space, 10 multifamily residential units, and a 357 square foot building connector. 
<coughs> the application will be re uh, reviewed for compliance with Section 16.2.3, Minor Subdivision Review, Section 19.9, and Site Plan Review, and Section 19.6.4, Town Center Design Standards. <coughs> um, we'll handle the, the balance of this uh, hearing in this matter as follows. The um, board will first uh, hear with a summary from the applicant of any changes made to the plans since the last meeting. We will then have a uh, public hearing session, uh, which has been advertised for this evening, which all members of the public are welcome to speak. Uh, at the close of the public comment, the board will begin discussion, and at the end of the discussion, the board has the option to approve, approve the conditions, or deny the application. Would the applicant uh, like to summarize where we stand and what has changed since the uh, last public hearing? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, my name is John Kenny. I'm a civil engineer at WBRC, Architects and Engineers. I'm here with Jocelyn Booth, Booth the architect on the project, and um, with Evan Amber Meyerowitz. Um, we really appreciate this opportunity, this special meeting, to reconsider the, um, the subdivision plan and, and these minor changes of the site plan. Um, it's very much appreciated by, by us all. Um, as you mentioned, the subdivision plan wasn't recorded in time in the 90-day time frame, so we're back um, requesting reapproval of that, that subdivision plan. There have been no changes to the, to, the, to the plan, to the subdivision itself. Um, we did add one note on there uh, as requested regarding um, easements, deeds for the easements. So that, that's note 11 on the subdivision plan. But other than that, it's, uh, you know, there's no, no changes. The only changes, I guess, um, there are changes that reflect the proposed minor site changes that, that Jocelyn will talk about. That's reflected. So it's an updated site plan, uh, subdivision plan, excuse me. Um, but the plot layouts, the easements, none of that has changed at all. And um, we did submit the draft easements as well for, for town attorney review. So that's, that's in the process. I believe that's a condition of approval tonight. Um, I could just run through the project quickly. Um, this is the project site. Um, the uh, project site is on Hillway. Uh, Scott Dyer Road and Ocean House Road. As you can see on this uh, slide, is a blow up of the aerial of the project site, the parcel. This is the proposed subdivision. It's lots one, two, and three. Uh, lot one is the lot that will is proposed for development. Um, there are a number of proposed changes to the site plan that um, that Jocelyn is that we'll talk about. In, in detail. So, thank you. Hi there, Jocelyn Booth, WBRC. So there are six changes, uh, minor changes to the site plan that I'd like to bring up. I have them all on this key plan map here, and I'll go through each of them uh, more in depth. So, is there a pointer up here? Um, so the first change is down in the lower right-hand corner. We are shifting um, a tree over in order to make room for snow, maro uh, snow removal. The second change is up in the top left, and as I said, I'll kind of zoom in on each of these in a minute so you can see more of them in depth. But one of the conditions of approval was to show where a generator pad was going to go if we proposed a generator and to talk about that a little bit. So we have added a generator pad. Um, the third item is the connector in between the two buildings. Um, originally was orthogonal. We've maintained the area of it and the height of it, but the shape of it has changed slightly as the construction documents has prog progressed, and so I'll show that. Um, changes four and five had to have to do with tweaks at the entries to two of the units. And item six is um, there's previously a note about the exterior building signage um, being lit that was there, but we now have the two signs that are being proposed are not lit. Peter? Yes. Can I ask a question? You're talking about changes. 
Are there any changes from what you presented the, at our last meeting? No. Okay. This is the so exact same So we're looking at exactly the same things we looked at at our prior meetings. Yes. Okay, thank yep. you. Exact same presentation. So as far as change one and the shifting of the tree, um, you can see over on the left, the approved design, the tree that was up there, we're going to be shifting over um, to Hill Way. And this is really just to allow a space for snow removal. Thank you. That's this tree here, shifting over to here. So you can see in the proposed design, the tree located there. Um, in its place, there'll be a wild, wildflower garden that's seasonal. So it's something attractive during the summer and spring months, but in snow removal, there's a place to put the snow. Uh, item two is the generator pad location. Um, as I mentioned, this was a condition of approval to show the location of the generator pad. So we've located it here. There's some screening of uh, vegetation in front of it. And one of the other conditions is showing the proposed generator um, that we have. Here's some information on it. Um, it has a level two acoustical enclosure. Down here are the allowable um, noise limits per the city. And up here, you can see the site plan. This is based on um, at the property line. So we have here the distances to the property line and the expected sound level at each of the property line and how that meets the ordinance. Uh, changes three, four, and five are shown here together. So item three is the connector. You can see here is originally an orthogonal shape, kind of a wider stair. During the construction documents, it's thinned out and rotated a bit to allow access to it. Um, this has also allowed us to improve some of the windows on the outside, as well as the roof and the structure. Item four, originally we had the entry to these two units on two different facades. We've combined them to both be on the same facade and share a porch, um, basically eliminating this entry and having a shared walkway and shared patio over that. And item five, we had a covered um, entry here. We've added a solid wall at this back portion, the purpose of which is to hide the electric meters from view. So looking a little closer at those three changes, you can see down at the bottom the approved design of the connector. You can see up above, um, it has the same height and area, just a slightly different shape and slightly more glazing. Uh, changes three and five. Right here is where that solid wall has been added. There was an existing patio there before. And this is where there's now two doors on this elevation instead of one with the entry spanning over both of them. Looking from the other elevation, uh, looking at the connector, you can kind of see it on this side, but there's an increased amount of glazing at that connector. And then over here, you can see where the door to this unit was on the side, and it's been replaced with a window as the door has been removed around to the other side. Here's kind of a 3D view looking at that connector a little bit more closely. You can see the approved design down here, the proposed design, and then zoomed in a little bit further. And looking at the change with the door switching sides. And finally, change six, the site lighting. The location of the two signs in question are up here and up here. And again, these will not be lit. And that is the extent of the minor changes we're looking uh, for approval on. Before we begin the public comment period, any board members have questions for the uh, applicant that would they'd like to have addressed first? Okay, there being none, <coughs> excuse me. We will now um, open the matter for public comment. And just for clarification again, I want to say that there are two things being considered. One is basically just a reapproval of the subdivision plan, which has had no changes whatsoever on it. And the other is the approval of the site plan as amended by this uh, little list of uh, changes, which Jocelyn has just listed and uh, described in some detail. Uh, would anybody from the public like to be heard on this? Okay, there being uh, no people, uh, we will close the public comment period. And turn next to a discussion by the board. Uh, any board members have comments, Jonathan? Um, 
One thing that when, when this was originally approved, there was a number of concerns from uh, the neighborhood, uh, I think the Rand Road and the Phillip Road area. Um, from my perspective, the proposed changes to the site plan uh, don't really uh, make any effect on, uh, I would say, f from that neighborhood's perspective. Um, the removal of a tree is up by the farmhouse and um, the other changes to the uh, uh, to the structure itself really sort of in my view makes sense uh, one was shifting over a door which would kind of take it out of a driveway and and they're all on the facing route 77 side um, the only the only change the proposal change that was a condition of the approval was the uh, the generator um, but from looking at the sound studies that were provided it doesn't seem that they would be uh, there they'd all be within um, what the ordinance allows uh, for sound and obviously uh, from our discussions at the workshop and the last meeting uh, generators I think going to be only for emergency purposes only so uh, I, my personal view is I don't have a concern uh, with the proposal with the proposed change and the, actually the only one that is close to the neighborhood is the uh, it's I guess it's not really a change but the the confirmation from the applicant that the sign on Hillway and Route 77 is not going to be lit. I know that was a concern from the from the neighborhood, so um, they're confirming that it's not going to be lit. That's just my observations on it. Thank you, Victoria. Joe, Victoria. I'd have to concur. I agree with all those. Um, thank you for bringing those up. So let the neighbors know. I just had a real general: Is this okay if you make a change? And the board can also. On your plat, it says uh, first plan at the um, signing where you sign. It says conditions. It, do you sometimes put conditions of approvals for other communities in that signing plat by putting conditions there? Because I'm wondering, um, it's it's if that's the conditions of approval, they're not there. But if we leave it blank, would somebody think by looking at this plat there are no conditions of approval, which is not correct? So I'm just wondering if we could pull that out, unless anyone has objections to pulling out the line that says conditions. Um, well, um, we're wondering, I guess we have a mylar for signature tonight, and I'm wondering if we oh. could alter that. <laughs> Mylar in some way to, well, or, or put a note on there for those conditions. If there's a condition for the subdivision plan itself, um, there's one condition that's stated regarding the deeds for the, for the sewer easements, and that's yep. actually a note on the subdivision plan. So I wonder if we could say in that condition space, um, maybe see note 11 or refer to that note. In terms of uh, yeah, tying it back into I did know you had the mylar ready to go, and I don't so, want to hold it up, so <laughs> I'm okay. But that was the I, only condition really related to the subdivision plan itself, so if that's acceptable. Um, and just also, um, condition number one is in note number 11, and it's word for word, except where right after it says, these deeds shall be conveyed. Our condition of approval says and recorded, but you left out and recorded. But once again, if the mylar is ready to go, I'm going to assume you're going to record that. <laughs> so those yeah. are the only things I was going to question. Why'd you leave that out? But if the mylar is ready to go. I'm not going to hold it up. So okay. those are my only because I always go through these things. But yeah, I'm all set. Unless okay, else thank has. you. Yeah, right. see you later. I actually think Victoria brings up a good point. I hadn't thought about it, but I think we can fix it on the mylar by just writing in that blank on the mylar, um, as stated in planning board order dated today's date. That's, yeah. And I think that can be written in ink on the mylar because, in fact, there are four conditions here, and those are, in fact, conditions. And so I think, I think that's a good point. So it'll just be incorpororated by reference and that will be sufficient yeah. notice. Yeah. Just actually write that on the plan itself with the same pen we use to sign it. So we don't hold it up. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah, I don't want to hold it up. Can you pen that in tonight? Sure. As, as we yeah. sign the mylar? Good. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Joe? I'm good. Uh, 
<coughs> Pardon me, Elaine. I just wanted to bring up again something I mentioned last week. Um, you did submit, I think, a, a new letter for this meeting, but it still doesn't include a clear statement of the question I asked about last time. You have incorporated by reference in this new site plan application, and we have to look at it as a completely new application, materials that were submitted with your prior application. And the engineers who have looked at this have just looked at the new things, not re-analyzed, used their work analyzing the prior information. And I'm looking for an affirmative statement by you, the engineers who prepared these materials, that there have been no material changes to any of the information provided in connection with the May 17, 2016 approval, other than items specifically mentioned in the new materials provided in connection with this new application. That's correct. That's okay. correct. We did, um, we did, in this latest submission, we did resubmit the whole set of drawings that were reviewed by Sebago Technics. Um, and they reviewed that in, in, in relation to their, the issues that they saw before. And, um, and uh, they, they provided a letter recently that said everything was addressed and, and conditions were met as well. So no, the only changes that are on the, on the drawings are what we're talking about tonight. That's it. Okay, thank you. Because we're making new findings as of today based on old materials and new materials. And I just want to make sure the old materials are still accurate, except as you... Elaine, is your point speaking just for clarification to both the subdivision and the site plan? I'm specifically concerned about subdivision because the subdivision is the one that is a completely new that is, finding. That's de novo, yeah. Yeah, the, the materials submitted sort of meld the two, but I'm sp more particularly concerned about this, the subdivision criteria. Mm -hmm. And the other point I just wanted to make, Peter, you had mentioned that there are no changes to the subdivision plan. In fact, there are changes to the subdivision plan, the changes that reflect the site plan amendments. So we couldn't just re-sign the old plan because there have been some changes that are reflected on the new plan, which I think is fine. I just wanted to clarify that. Good point. Other than that, I think it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. I'm, I'm fine with that. And uh, a question to Elaine, would it be of value in the um, motion to include, to refer to both the materials submitted for May 17 and the materials submitted for tonight? I in, thought that we did that. It certainly does in the, if we didn't. And it, I haven't. I have to look at what's incorporated here. So. Well, there's a general recital about plans and materials submitted. Um, it just not differentiating to, between the two separate. Not, right. I mean, it's, it doesn't specify. Well, and I'm just asking. I, I'm fine either way. It just was a thought as Elaine was talking. Well, and the previous approval was based on plans and materials extending back, back prior to that prior to for the, some period of time. Yeah. Right. And then this one is yep. since then to now. I'm not sure that we would normally have to capture that. Elaine, do you have some lingo you'd like to? I think that the, the, our general, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, is fine. OK. That's a good point, Brian. Thank and, you. I'm, I'm good. Uh, I would just like to add that um, for the sake of the people attending or, or viewing, <coughs> we have an, a, an extensive analysis um, from the town planner checking out each um, of the criteria for both subdivision and site plan and indeed the town center design requirements and addressing um, in any respect that uh, is, is significant whether this uh, these applications meet it and they do and I, I won't bore you by going through in great you know in, in detail what uh, this analysis provides but I do want to assure you that the criteria for both subdivision and site plan have been 
uh, reviewed carefully, and uh, this isn't just a perfunctory approval tonight. Um, any more discussion by members of the board? More questions for the applicant? Um, if that being the case, we have a... Um, Peter, I, I, I can sorry, do the motion. Pardon me? I can do the motion. That, that's where I was heading. Yeah. You, you'd like to? Okay. Yeah, I can do the whole thing. And I think if you... Right. Um, it starts on page eight, and Jonathan, you have yep. the... and I have the... You got the page. Okay, great. Yep. Sorry, can I, can I jump in before you start? Sure. I, I read the motion last night, and I have a couple of suggested changes to some of the findings, to two of the findings, number 28 and 29. Was it? 28 and 29. And if you think 28, if you don't agree with the need to change 28, then we can just... So I, I changed 28 to kind of go along with the way that the previous ones were stated. The amendments to the site plan do not change the adequacy of sewage disposal for the lots rather than doing the will, will not. Go ahead. So one of the changes that you have in here is that originally there was a requirement that deeds be swapped for the lots mm -hmm. and that they had to be recorded when the subdivision plan is recorded. Mm -hmm. The applicant has requested that they be recorded when the lots are conveyed out. Okay. So, so because that, of that timing change. That's why you, you went with the, the other method. Yes. Okay. But that doesn't, I mean, honestly, six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of going the same way. I just was okay. going for consistency. Okay. And does the same hold true for the utilities? Yes. Okay. All right, all yours. Thank you, all right, findings of facts. Number one, two Penguin Properties LLC owned by Dr. Zev and Amber Meyerwitz are requesting minor subdivision review of a three lot subdivision and site plan review of two buildings containing 6,205 square feet of medical sp office space, 10 multifamily residential units and 357 square feet building connector located at 12 Hill Way which requires review for compliance with section 1623 minor subdivision review, section 19-9 site plan review and section 19-6-4 town center design standards. Number two, the subdivision will not result in undue water pollution. The subdivision is not located in a 100 year floodplain. Soils will support the proposed uses, the slope of the land, proximity to streams and state and local water resource rules and regulations will not be compromised by the project. Number three, the subdivision will have a sufficient quantity and quality of potable water. Number four, the subdivision will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion control plan provided. Number five, the subdivision will not cause unreasonable road congestion or unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic. The subdivision does not include road construction and therefore a requirement for road network connectivity while discouraging through traffic is not applicable. All lots are provided with vehicular access. Number six, the subdivision will provide for adequate sewage disposal. Number seven, the subdivision will provide for adequate solid waste disposal. Number eight, the subdivision will not have an undue adverse impact on scenic or natural areas, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, or public access to the shoreline. Number nine, the subdivision is compatible with applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and town ordinances. Number 10, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number 11, the subdivision will not adversely impact surface water quality. Number 12, the subdivision will not adversely impact the quality or quantity of groundwater. Number 13, the subdivision is not located in the floodplain. Number 14, the subdivision does not include wetlands. Number 15, the proposed subdivision will provide for adequate stormwater management. Number 16, the subdivision is not located within the watershed of Great Pond. Number 17, the subdivision is not located in more than one municipality. Number 18, the subdivision is not located on land where liquidation harvesting was conducted. Number 19, the subdivision does provide for access to direct sunlight. Number 20, the subdivision does provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the subdivision and screening as needed. Number 21, the subdivision will comply with the open space impact fee with the payment of $13,458. Number 22, the subdivision lots will pr be provided with access to utilities. 20, number 23, the subdivision plan will not be constructed in phases. 
Number 24, the amendments to the site plan for the development reflect the nat natural capabilities of the site to support development. Number 25, the amendments to the site plan do not include changes to access in vehicular or pedestrian circulation on the site. Number 26, the amendments to the site plan do not change stormwater management. Um, looks like there's mm -hmm. another 26. 26B. Number 27, the amendments to the site plan do not change erosion control measurements. Number 28, the amendments to the site plan do not change the quantity and quality of potable, potable water. Number 29, the amendments to the site plan will provide for adequate sewage disposal. Number 30, the amendments to the site plan will be provided with access to utilities. Number 31, the amendments to the site plan do not change to allow location, storage, or discharge of materials harmful to surface or groundwaters. Number 32, the amendments to the site plan do not change provision for adequate disposal of solid waste. Number 33, the amendments to the site plan do not change the waters. Uh, do not change the waters. That. Excuse me? You're saying the it's that. Uh, the amendments to the site plan do not change the waters that will are uh, the waters that will not be discharged to adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. If anybody wants a friendly amendment on that, let me know. Um, number 34, <laughs> the amendments to the site plan do not change demonstrated adequate technical and financial capabilities to complete the project. Number 35, the amendments to the site plan will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. Number 36, the amendments to the site plan will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site and screening as needed. Number 37, the amendments to the site plan will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. Number 38, the amendments to the site plan do not change that, the, that storage of exterior materials on the site that may be visible to the public will be screened by fencing or landscaping. Number 39, the Planning Board finds in accordance with Section 16-3-2A3 that no sidewalk is required on the Scott Dyer Road frontage of Lot 3. Number 40, the application substantially complies with Section 16-2-3 Minor Subdivision Review, Section 19-9 Site Plan Review, and Section 19-6-4 Town Center Design Standards. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of two Penguin pro Properties LLC for minor subdivision review of a three-lot subdivision and site plan review as amended of two buildings containing 6,205 square feet of medical office space, 10 multifamily residential units, and 357 square feet building connector located 12 Hill Way, each be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that deeds be prepared in the form acceptable to the town attorney for sewer easements to benefits lots one and two, a parking easement on lot two to benefit lot one, and an access easement to benefit lot two over lot one to access the parking lot, and that the deeds be conveyed and recorded when any lot is conveyed. Number two, that the applicant will pay an open space impact fee of $13,458 prior to the issuance of a building permit for any lot in the subdivision. Number three, that there be no recording of the subdivision plan, issuance of a building permit, or alteration of the site until that the approved, or excuse me, the above conditions have been satisfied. Number four, that there shall be no issuance of a building permit nor alteration of the site until a performance guarantee has been provided to the town in an amount approved by the town engineer, a form approved by the town attorney, and all approved by the town manager. Can I make a friendly amendment? Mm. Can we um, have number 33 read? The amendments to the site plan do not change that. Waters will not be discharged to adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. So that's exactly how it reads. Because <laughs> I'm not sure what. I don't know what I was reading on, but I'm, I'm fine with that amendment. Are you, are you calling on the, the language on the printed pager? Yeah, I'm not sure the exact wording as it was first said. That's what Jonathan said. I think that's what I said. It just did you? Exactly. Okay. I did. Oh, I, no, I thought you said facts. 
kind no. of flop in mind. I, I read it um, as it's written. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it came out as written, so I just want to... Well, I'm fine with that friendly amendment. He, he's had a long day. It was a lot to read. It was. Thank you, Jonathan, by the way. That was, that was a... I think Elaine's got something. That was a lot of work. One Elaine, one yeah. later. In number 29, um, I want to conform it, or I guess it's now number 30. Anyway, 29 on our sheet. The amendments to the site plan will provide for access to utilities so that it's the same as the previous one. I guess that's now numbers 29 and 30. So you want to amend number 30, the amendments to the site plan will provide for access to utilities? Yes. All right, I'm fine with that. Okay. Is that it? Oh, I was Girl? just going to second the motion. <laughs> oh, any other friendly amendments? We're ready to call for a second. Caroline, you're seconding this? Yeah. Okay, we have a seconded motion. Is there any discussion on the seconded motion? Being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The uh, last item of business in this special meeting uh, is a last chance for a public comment on anything else that wasn't on the agenda. Would any member of the public like to be heard? <clears throat> Thank you all for attending and uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Seconded. In favor? We stand adjourned. Thank you. The, uh, we'll resume in just a couple of minutes in the Jordan Conference Room on the workshop agenda. We need to sign uh, the Members button. of the public are welcome Let's to see. attend the workshop as well. The, uh, there's not an opportunity to speak at the workshop, just so you know.